Roe v. Wade, after a good run, is now functionally overturned here in the United States, thanks to our uh, Supreme Court that made this cowardly decision in the dead of the night. The Texas law bans abortion once a so-called fetal heartbeat is detected, usually around six weeks. It also seemingly contradicts the Supreme Court decision in Roe v. Wade, which guarantees the right to abortion until fetal viability, which is about 22 to 24 weeks. The Texas law also allows any private citizen to sue someone helping a woman get an abortion, which includes doctors, clinic staff, or even someone who drives a woman to a clinic. Those who win a lawsuit can be awarded at least $10,000. At least. Those are the ones who are breaking the law who will be held liable for their criminal activity. Elizabeth Graham is vice president of Texas Right to Life. She says anti-abortion advocates are now focused on a Mississippi case the Supreme Court will hear this fall that could overturn Roe v. Wade. So this is absolutely unhinged, okay? This is a decent enough explanation of what the law entails, but I, I will, you know, give you a, a, a more top line analysis. So technically what uh, states have tried to do before is, you know, ban abortions, make it illegal to have an abortion many times over at the state level, right? But because of the Roe v. Wade decision, which Brett Kavanaugh at the time considered to be a, like a super precedent, which is that, you know, this is a well-established law of the land and, and unchangeable, okay? It's a constitutional interpretation that is very difficult to change, uh, which, of course, Amy COVID Barrett did not have the same feelings, but whatever. Because of the fact that they considered that to be a super precedent, it was impossible to uh, use the state machinations to actually punish people criminally. So one of the most psychotic ways of getting around that decision was to get citizens to implement a bounty system and basically lock anyone and everyone into legal trouble with a minimum $10,000 uh, penalty that you have to pay, including like the lawyer fees and shit like that for the other party. Functionally eliminating uh, anyone uh, who, who may or may not want to uh, offer abortion or reproductive services that feature abortion in the entire state of Texas. So basically, a random person right now could literally sue another random person for driving a woman to get an abortion at a clinic. Even that person is liable to be sued. And in that lawsuit, they can at the very least tie them up for endless hours and put them under this like insane obligation. You can literally sue people in different parts of Texas. So like, you know, you might live in fucking Austin, but you can get sued by some random dipshit all the way in an area of Texas that's like super far from Austin, you know, nine hours away from Austin. And you would have to go there. You would have to get a lawyer. You would have to go there. You would have to fucking sit through all that legal trouble. And still, technically, you could lose and end up paying uh, at least minimum $10,000 in damages to the other person, which by the way, what the fuck are the damages? Like it hurt my fee fees that this person went and got an abortion and also have to pay for their legal fees and their court fees and their lawyer fees. Now we already know that like, uh, you know, anti, uh, abortion slash pro birth activists, these, uh, pro lifers that are not really, uh, pro life at all. Obviously they love staking out Planned Parenthoods and they've, that's precisely what they've been doing. The most disgusting part is the incentivization. Yeah. They are functionally deputizing people. They're literally gifting people $10,000 for reporting people who get abortions, which is five times the amount of COVID relief each person has gotten in 2021. Disgusting. It is so insane. This situation is so absolutely psychotic that I don't even know where to begin. Like I, it's just like a monstrous action that many other states are now going to follow through on, of course. Many other red states, that is. And the fact that, oh, there it is. Florida has already announced. Florida Senate president announces that they will be passing a model of Texas abortion law. And of course, the psychotic thing here is that the Supreme Court literally instead of saying this is unprecedented this is insane this is a way to like to get around roe v wade and you know functionally destroy roe v wade and there's numerous different constitutional problems that come along with like allowing the citizenry to lock people up into legal trouble and criminal punishments or not criminal punishments but like punishments in the form of fines that uh you know we need to hold off on this and that this this law cannot go into action while we you know figure out a way to interpret it and and see if it's like constitutionally even appropriate instead of doing that they pass it with a 5-4 decision 
but Chief Justice Roberts uh, siding with uh, the dissenting opinion and uh, and all of the other conservative psychos saying like, no, the, this law can continue. So it's insanity. It's absolutely insanity. I mean, even if you're like fucking, even if you're like, oh, abortion is, uh, you know, it's, it's terrible. It's fucking murder. How the fuck do you get to decide what someone can and can't do to their fucking own body? Like that's insane. Lucy Huber uh, writes to illustrate how insane uh, a six week abortion ban is. I did IVF in vitro fertilization and still did not know I was pregnant until four and a half weeks. Oh, that's the other part of it. Banning abortion or uh, banning abortions beyond uh, five weeks is really disgusting because that means you're just two weeks late on your period, which can happen. 90% of women find out at five weeks or beyond five weeks, six weeks, that they are even fucking pregnant, okay? In the first trimester, 90% of abortions occur in the first trimester between five weeks and the end of the first trimester. 90% of abortions. And the process is incredibly simple for the most part. You take a pill and you have a heavy flow period, okay? It, it feels like a heavy flow period. It, may, it fucks you up a little bit, obviously. You can't have it too much. It's literally as early as you can possibly know that when you're paying someone to put an embryo in your body on a specific day and keep track of it, people are often surprised I got an ultrasound at five weeks because almost nobody but IVF patients get them. Most people aren't even seen by their OBGYN before six to eight weeks. So even if people could manage to find out that they were pregnant at the first possible minute and schedule an abortion in less than two weeks, they would have to do so without even going to their own doctor and just having done a stick test. But obviously that's the point, right? A six-week abortion ban is a total abortion ban because pretty much the only people who could reasonably get an abortion are people who very much want to be pregnant. So that's that's what Texas implemented. And now Florida wants to implement the same exact thing. And uh, that's where we're at now. Incredibly restrictive, overturns Roe v. Wade. The Supreme Court knew that it would, and they still went along with it. Also, a fetal heartbeat is not a heartbeat. It is a group of cells that will become a future pacemaker for the heart to gain capacity to fire electrical signals. Heart is far from fully formed at this stage. Of course, of course. Oh, the other part about this is that there's no exceptions for rape or incest. That's right. The only way that you can legally get an abortion beyond six weeks in the state of Texas now, which by the way, no one is going to facilitate that regardless because they don't want to get fucking sued. You know what I mean? Like you don't want nurses. Nurses don't want to fucking have to go through the legal trouble. People don't want to drive. Ambulance drivers don't want to go through the legal trouble. No one wants to do this. So it's a functional ban, but the only person that can get an abortion is like if there is an extreme circumstance where there's uh, there is a problem where like, you know, carrying the pregnancy to term will kill the host. That's it. The justices will either have to strike down row or say that life can be protected at this stage. And if life can be protected at this stage, we thereby concede that Roe was a judicial concoction and is now no longer the law or the precedent of the land. But boys, we we were out there protecting women's rights in Afghanistan, remember, right? I mean, we're 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 out there protecting women's rights in Afghanistan when we can't we don't even give a fuck about women's rights in America. So, were we really protecting women's rights? Of course not. Here is the uh the the exception. Notwithstanding any other law, civil action under this section may not be brought by a person who impregnated the abortion patient through an act of rape, sexual assault, incest, or any other prohibited actions. So it's still technically illegal, but you can't rape someone. Like if there is a rape victim and they go and get an abortion, that's still illegal. So someone else could fucking sue. But I'm glad that they carved out a specific exception for like the rapists themselves to go and not with any other law, civil action under the section may not be brought by a person who impregnated the abortion patient through an act of rape. So like the person himself, the rapist can't sue, guys. So don't worry. The rapist family can still sue or uh, any other person can still, like a random person can still sue. Is it still illegal? You can, you are being forced right now in the state of Texas to carry a rape child, uh, a rape pregnancy to term. I've talked about this a million times over, but here's the deal. Abortion bans don't actually stop abortions from happening because the fetus has no viability outside of the fucking womb for the most part. Okay, especially in the first trimester, because it's not a fucking fetus even. It's like barely formed. And that's precisely why people do what is known as back alley abortions. They forcibly abort the baby themselves. So an access to abortion as a part of the reproductive health system, reproductive health care system, just means there's going to be more back alley abortions, which leads to more than 6 million deaths and also um, disfigurations and, and infertility and, and whatnot a year in women that get back alley abortions in countries where 
uh, abortion is still severely restricted. That's it. So you're not even banning abortions. You're just banning safe abortions. That's it. That's the reality. Oh no, I dropped the link to an easy to use program that spams the Texas whistleblower website with phony tips. Don't click that link. So embarrassed. That is one thing, but like, that's not going to stop it. Uh, people are still going to absolutely fucking. And of course, and I've said this already, a fuckload of these like psychotic reactionary pro-lifer groups are obviously going to be putting a lot of money and a lot of funds and a lot of efforts into narking, snitching, and like filing these like idiotic fucking lawsuits in an effort to stop people from actually getting this routine medical procedure that is in many countries free to get, including fucking Turkey for the record. Muslim country, a country that's like, you know, 90 plus percent Muslim, where in public hospitals and also especially in private hospitals as well, you can just get a fucking abortion. In the first trimester, you can just go and get a fucking abortion. So whenever people say like, oh, the Taliban, blah, 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 or, you know, uh, all this other stuff, comparing it to like how barbaric the uh, I Islamic uh, countries are, like, no, motherfucker, that's a, that's a you thing, okay? That's on you, bitch. That's Christian fundamentalism, okay? But yes, uh, it would be terrible if everyone fucking routinely DDoS those, uh, those, those narc hotlines that they've set up. That would be really horrible. I, I certainly, a TikToker has made a script to flood text abortion whistleblower site with fake information. An easy to use iOS shortcut lets non-technical users bombard the site according to motherboard's test. Man, I'm really worried about covering this. I mean, that would be so bad if people did that. So I, I probably shouldn't cover this. Fortunately, the IP banned me, found out this morning. So when I ask this site, it gives me something that looks like this. But before that, I was able to get about 245. And this morning, about 48 more, so about 300. But then I started thinking, what if I made this a bit easier for everybody? So I made an iOS shortcut. You might be asking yourself, what does the iOS shortcut do? Well, it picks a random city, county, and Texas zip code. And all the other information. Puts it in the form, automatically submits it. So if you go to the website from your iOS device, this is the web page with the form. You click the share button, you click the shortcut, it automatically sends the form. It will then refresh the page and give you the option to do it again. Hit that five seconds. If you're interested, I'll put a link in my bio and download the shortcut along with some instructions on how to use the shortcut. And because it uses realistic information, it makes it harder for them to parse through the data. Also, if you're using a VPN, that makes it significantly harder. Most commercial or non-commercial, sorry, most residential uh, uh, ISPs already have rotating IPs, usually, simply by just fucking turning your... I think you could just, like, uh, uh, get around that by just, like, turning your fucking uh, router on and off, but some might not. But ultimately, you know, there is a process you can use a VPN, for example, to, like, you know, you can get around that. I mean, that would be terrible, obviously, you should not do that. I mean, also set that VPN to a Texas server. Don't let them just parse out reports from non-Texas states. Yeah, I looked into his code and one of the biggest flaws, but funniest part of his code is that the person you're reporting is my wife's boyfriend. That's hilarious. This is the person, Sean the Black. Oh, it's literally me? <laughs> wow, oh, uh, that's terrible. Oh no, the person who made this TikTok so upset at you. Nine month subscriber who made a code to mass report things no in the first video black says uh the script sends one request to text website around 10 to 15 seconds in the second black adds that the script sent around 300 requests in that time of upload before the site blocked his ip address black told motherboard that the idea came from his tiktok mutual victoria hammett her video about the website inspired the idea for automation the details were hammered out by myself though he wrote black said over 4170 people have clicked the code and 4870 have clicked on the shortcut itself according to the data from the link tree page holy shit that is an insane that is an insane ctr dude or not even a it, click-through rate that's like an insane yeah it is it's an insane click-through rate what the fuck anyone and everyone that clicked on it was like i'm using this shit anyway in response to the ip ban black found a way that essentially outsourced his approach and created an ios shortcut so that anyone with an iphone can easily replicate what he did iOS shortcuts are essentially predetermined commands that can be bundled together and executed when the user just taps the shortcut on their device here the shortcut picks a random texas city county and zip code and other required information then puts the data from into the reporting form form black said in the video to use the shortcut you need to visit the texas website click the share button and then click the shortcut in motherboard's test we had to turn on allow untrusted shortcuts in an ios device <laughs> i love that the rest of this website is literally telling you how to do it like the rest of the article is literally just like you know when we tested this out here were some things that we needed to do in ios device settings before being able to run the shortcut on thursday the texas web website displayed a captcha presumably in an attempt to stop automated submissions but simply completing the captcha first 
and then running the shortcut bypass this the site that displayed a thank you message for the submission regarding the catch black said i feel it's best not to reveal how i intend on dealing with this hurdle i will say i am working on a solution man how terrible dude this guy so frustrating to do such a thing i cannot believe i just read this out loud in front of forty-one thousand young uh minds who spend literally all of their waking hours in front of a computer and love doing stuff like this this is oh man that is i wanted to remind you of the dangers of doing a horrible thing like this a totally immoral thing that you should not do anyway oh one other thing i was gonna say is like what's absolutely insane about this and like how irresponsible it is that the supreme court pushed this through despite the fact that like i am not a jurisprudence fetishist at all you know i don't give a fuck like i i personally think it's hilarious that people try to act like you know there's such a thing as like i'm a constitutionalist like oh it's just a matter of different interpretation no you're you are not a constitutionalist you're just a reactionary okay your point of view is diluted. Your point of view is violent. And you are trying to couch your reactionary and sometimes fascist point of view under the guise of an intellectual disagreement. So you can keep sipping cocktails with other liberal friends of yours at the fucking circuits that you attend. And that's it. You are a reactionary conservative who is not actually doing like a different kind of legal interpretation. You are just trying to find a way to intellectualize your backwards uh, ideas through the guise of like uh, a constitutional interpretation. So fuck the Supreme Court, motherfuck the Supreme Court, motherfuck all the conservatives on the Supreme Court, fuck the Supreme Court in general. The fact that we've had like the majority of Supreme Court justices appointed by people who did not even win the majority is psychotic, including three from Donald Trump alone. Like it's just so fucked up it's so broken absolutely destroy the supreme court fuck it pack it do whatever the fuck you can i do not give a shit and also if people are out here uh talking about how like oh my god what about the repercussions like it's so dumb i don't care i do not give a fuck yes i did see asha rangappa's banger tweet yes she said hey bernie bros you did this guys sorry but someone had to say it i'm so i'm glad i'm glad that someone did say it you know what a brave woman dude that's what happens when you're a former FBI special agent, okay? You're brave enough to say the right things like this. Thank you. Somehow Bernie is responsible for this. You're right. Not the Democratic Party that did everything in their fucking power to put up one candidate that would, like, that would definitely lose to Donald Trump. Bernie Sanders made RGB die, RBG die. Yeah, Bernie Sanders murdered Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Remember all of those liberals that are fucking freaking out about this that also were totally an advocate for not letting Ruth Bader Ginsburg retire because she's a fucking girl boss? Good job, dude. Thank God we had that fucking carcass uh, in the Supreme Court for an extended period of time so she could die under Donald Trump. It was so sick. It's great. What the fuck are we doing, dude? Hey, by the way, guys, currently, while this is going on, there are Supreme Court justices that should also fucking retire you wrong for that i don't give a fuck dude fuck ruth bader ginsburg dude i i literally don't care jill filipovich who said it's sexist to say ruth bader ginsburg should retire is blaming bernie sanders yeah how old is fucking briar 80 yeah get the fuck out of here dude yeah the, the the fact that like uh stephen briar is still in the supreme court at the age of fucking 83 when uh we're under you know we're under joseph robinette biden's uh leadership right now where there we could put in like a you know, sexy little fucking 35 year old. Okay. Like, I don't give a fuck. Put a 35 year old communist on the Supreme Court, dude, who will never die. Make sure that they don't even have any sort of like prior health conditions. No, like family history of, of, you know, any sort of like adverse health conditions. Just we'll live forever. Okay. We'll live forever and we'll do communism on the Supreme Court. Like the fact that we haven't uh, done this yet, and the very same people that were like advocating for Ruth Bader Ginsburg to not retire because she's a fucking girl boss, Slay Queen, are saying the exact same thing about fucking Breyer is insane to me. And yes, I am a fucking ageist and an ableist when it comes to the Supreme Court. Not an ableist in the sense that like, you know, I, I care if they have, uh, you know, disabilities that prevent them from walking or some shit, but like ableist in the sense that like, you know, I don't want them having dementia, like a history of dementia or Alzheimer's in their family. So they literally will just like maximize the amount of time that's spent on the Supreme Court. Remember when RBG died of COVID? Died, did that COVID wedding two weeks before she died? Yeah. I don't think she, I don't know if she died of COVID. That never came out. But what's your stance on having only nine Supreme Court justices? Pack it. I don't give a fuck. I don't care if the Supreme Court ceased to exist tomorrow. So I don't care if like the uh, supposed integrity of the Supreme Court is called in the question. If there's just like people politically packing the Supreme Court. And then what if the Republicans pack it again? Okay, motherfucker, they're, they're doing it already without packing it, so shut the fuck up. Oh no, what if the Republicans, you know, game the system more? Well, I don't know. The fact that we have a permanent supermajority of, of conservative Supreme Court justices that just 
overturned Roe v. Wade at the fucking middle of the night. Seems like they're not playing by the fucking rules. So they're going to do whatever the fuck they can. They don't ever fucking apologize for doing this shit. They do terrorism on a daily basis. And you're over here like, uh, what about Majerus Putin's fetishism? Uh, like, shut the fuck up. You're an idiot, dude. What matters is saving people, okay? What matters is ensuring that people can still have safe abortions if they need it. What matters is that women should be able to have bodily autonomy over their own fucking bodies and not forced to carry pregnancies of the terms. I don't care. I don't care about the fucking Supreme Court. Fuck the Supreme Court, okay? Let me make that clear, uh, like, one more time. Motherfuck the Supreme Court, okay? Bunch of fucking psychotic, elitist, uh, pedophile weirdos just sitting around in fucking robes and deciding what happens to Americans. Like, fuck them. Allegedly pedophile weirdos. It, it's literally like saying, women, I don't want women to vote, but I can't use the state mechanism to prevent women from voting, so I'm just going to, you know, make everyone liable to pay me $10,000 if they facilitate in allowing a woman to vote. 